Hello, hello. Gonna be going live in just a few here. I'm just getting a few things set up on my end. Okay, I think I have everything good to go. So I'm gonna go ahead and switch my screen here. And we'll get started. some things around here okay just double check and make sure all my audio is working looks like it is all right cool so we're gonna do part two in a way I'm working on the same page of this illustrated children's book I did a lot more rigging, um, a lot more Photoshop work, and now I'm basically doing the animation. Um, I have a little bit of a start going here, and I'll just kind of go through the process still, even after it's uh, started, to show you what I have so far. And then I have a scratch track with my dialogue um, with the narration for this part. So I'll go ahead and I'll play that out so you can hear what that sounds like. So she slipped from the covers without a single peep and gave her bunny to Izzy to help her sister sleep. Thank you, Elise, Isabella tearfully said. The two sisters hugged before Elise went back to bed. So she slipped from the covers. Okay, so for those of you that are just joining, um, if this is all new to you, what I basically do is I take a page, I scan it into the computer, and then I animate it. This is based off of a illustrated storybook called Izzy's Lost Blanket um, by a friend of mine uh, who's the illustrator or who is the author named Rick Steele. And uh, the illustration work is done by Elettra. Um, and yeah, I'll. I keep on forgetting to do this, but I'll put the their information in the description of this video. Um, so yeah, if you have any questions or anything like that, feel free to ask. This is me just basically showing my process of how I do this. Um, hey, Mike. And Abdullah, hey, how's it going? Um, so yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and get started showing you uh, what I basically do for this. So right now, I just kind of needed to get refreshed on where I was at. So she slipped from the covers without a single peep and gave her bunnings to Izzy to help her sister sleep. Okay, so I can see right here that I need to um, fix the background because I don't have a background with her. Um, let's see, so right now this is the background. This is the actual physical page. So I need to cut her out and uh, have it so that the, her pillow is there and color that all that in. Um, so to do that, what I'm gonna do is I'm going to open up the Photoshop file that all this is attached to by right clicking and then select uh, open source image. And because everything is linked right now, it's gonna open Photoshop up directly. So we'll wait for that to open. Okay, cool. So now I can go into, this is the, let's see, I gotta make sure I'm opening up the right file here. It looks like I am. So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to have a background layer separate. So I'm gonna save this file and I'm just gonna call this page nine background. So what I have is I have a Photoshop file for Izzy. I have a Photoshop file for Elise, so those are separate because for whatever reason, Photoshop tends to detach its link from Moho and or screw things up. So it helps to keep everything uh, for each layer separate as well. Main layer that is, so a character layer and the background layer. And then what I'm gonna do is once I have that saved is I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna delete all that and um, start working on this file here. So. I know based off of this animation, uh, let me turn the animation back on. 
that all of this pillow right here, back behind her head, I need to basically draw all that in. And so what I'm gonna do is first I'm going to, let's see, what's the best way to do this? It's kind of a learning process for me, but um, what I'm going to first do is, I'm gonna use the quick select uh, tool, which Abdullah, if you're on here, again, thank you so much. You've helped so much with uh, my Photoshop efficiency and this whole workflow. It's increased a lot. The speed, it's increased the speed a lot. So thank you. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna select the different body parts there, right there on her body. Uh, the hair strands and stuff like that I'll get because what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a mask in Photoshop and I won't have many more of these. This will just be something quick. Oops. Um, I don't have a right click on my pen here so I have to do it here. So I'm going to hide that, make my path active. Oops. Shut it again. Make the path active. Oh, why is it doing that? Oh, it is active. <laughs> And then I'm going to mask it. And it wasn't quite perfect there, so I just need to go in and retouch a few things. Make sure most of the selection is selected there. There we go, just makes my life a little bit easier. Um, yeah, so I'm gonna select, oops, just kind of color in the different parts here, let's go a hard brush. So what I'm doing is I'm just trying to make a selection of this character. Actually, you know what? <clears throat> I was doing that wrong. Let me back up here. I love how when I go live, I tend to forget everything of how I should be doing this. So I just need to cut her out. <laughs> so I, I was trying to make it so I was selecting her, but I need to just cut her out. So I'm just gonna use the pen tool Actually, you know what, shoot. Uh, I keep on second guessing myself. It's great to do that live. Okay, so something like that. And then, let's see. So I have an outside selection now. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna delete that other layer. I'm gonna duplicate this layer. Then I'll activate the path. Um, how do I want to do this? I think I'll do Control Shift I to do inverse. There we go. That's kind of what I'm looking for. <clears throat> so now, because it's in a mask, I'm gonna just paint parts in here. Um, yeah, actually, you know what? Sorry, this is rough. Okay, so with that path, I'm gonna delete her out. All right, we'll just do that. I'll just delete her out, and then I will color uh, everything else back in. Let's see, so we'll have This line there, the flow, turn that to 100. So again, I'm gonna be painting in this pillow. So right now I'm, I'm just going to draw it, connect the different parts. That looks good. And we'll try, let's see. We'll see if uh, content aware is gonna work, Abdullah, for this one. Okay, doesn't seem like it. <clears throat> so what I'm gonna do next is I'm going to create just kind of a lasso, whoops. Just something that I can keep 
inside the lines and we'll use the clone stamp make sure we get the gradient work in there So right now I'm just stamping in, um, whoops, oh, I don't think I wanted to do that. Oh no, there's a blanket, okay, that's right, there's a blanket layer on top. Oops. Let's see, let's see if we can get this content aware to work now. Nope, still wants to fill everything else in. So let's go to edit, uh, not content aware scare, scale, no. To edit, content aware fill. And let's tell it what we wanna fill in. Ah, I have everything selected. Hmm. Don't think I, I'm gonna think. Lasso. So again, here's the, this is the process. Doing it live is difficult because I overthink things, but um, that's just because I'm still learning it, I would have to say. So what this is, this is a cool little tool that allows you to have Photoshop fill in. So you can see here on the left, it's kind of filling in this pillow based off of the content that's surrounding it. Oops, so I wanted to keep that. All right, so that's doing a pretty good job there as far as finding out what content it wants me to use. Oh, it's grabbing a yellow. I don't know where it's grabbing that yellow from. Let's use that. See that a little bit better. Okay, perfect. So that kind of helped me a little bit there to fill in that pillow by itself. And then I'll just go in and oops, fill in the rest. Um, Okay. All this right here down here isn't too big of a deal because the blanket will be covering that. The strokes are a little bit thick, but that's okay. I can fix that. And then I'm gonna grab this next part here. Let's just see if we can get the content aware to work. There we go. That kind of worked a little bit better. Um, just gonna use a stamping brush here just to fill that in. Okay. Oops. And then I'll just use a brush just to fill this in as well. So again, her, hair, her head is gonna be over top of this pillow. Um, so I just need to fill in the back behind her head. Oh, I keep on forgetting to look at the comments, sorry. Um, thanks, Mike, really appreciate it. Hey, from Morocco, thanks for watching. Thank you, LY. I appreciate it. And Mike is in the UK. Very cool. Very, very cool. Um, okay, so 
yeah. If I'm not quite all there, you'll have to bear with me. I'm kind of kind of under the weather, but just needed to work on this today. So again, I figured I would show you my process. Unfortunately, I'm not having the the best of days going right now. Uh, let's do. Let's grab that color. Add some texture underneath because that's where our head's gonna go. And then we got over here. Oops. So ideally, what I'd want to do is create some sort of uh, selection wherever I'm painting, so I don't keep on painting over my lines. But yeah, see, like something like that. And this is kind of where it's best to work, even in this case. It's all gonna be one layer, but when I'm painting things in, it kind of helps to have a selection around this so I stop painting over the lines there. <sighs> but I have a, a tendency when working in something I'm not familiar with and going live of kind of forgetting how to do things properly, <laughs> but that's okay. All right, so again, we'll get to the animation soon for those that are watching. We're uh, just fixing a scene. So now what this should do is, um, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna save this. And it's not gonna save it here because this was a different file. So what I wanna do is I'm going to keep that just so I have something to reference. I'm gonna go back to frame zero, file, import, uh, general import. And then just make sure, okay, so that's saved. I'm gonna go to my PSDs. I'm gonna grab the background and I'm just gonna select my layer because there should only be one that I was working with. Oops, <laughs> technically there's two. So it's this one right here. I'm gonna rename this so it's not so bad naming. So I'm just gonna call that background. It's not gonna update it here, I don't think, but it will as soon as I bring it in, uh, maybe. But anyway, so there's the, the background. Oh shoot, I probably shouldn't have done that. Uh, so I'll have to hide some things or cut color some things out because I created my own pillow and I didn't want mean to do that. Um, so I'm gonna put the opacity on. And I wanna use the uh, Illustrator's original pillow. I didn't mean to my own. So I'm just gonna, oops, my thing is freezing. I'm just gonna draw back over her line work and connect it where the pillow would kind of sort of connect up there. Bring that back up to 100 opacity. Oops. Okay, and then um, Let's see, what's an easier way to do this? Let's use the pen tool, not the lasso tool. So I'm gonna use the pen tool and I'm gonna use that content aware, super awesome feature in Photoshop. And I'm going to see if it'll help me. I gotta highlight my path, make it active. And then I'm gonna hit shift backspace. And let's see if Photoshop can help me out there a little bit. Oh, not very good, okay. So this is where I need to go and tell Photoshop what it is that I want it to do content aware for. And it's trying to grab this pillow. So let me zoom out here. Go back to my brush. I need the wall, not the pillow. Okay. Um, oh, I put my line work. Eh, let's see. Let me zoom in here. So it's really difficult is what's happening is um, the artist, she uses a lot of textures and things like that. Uh, so I use either the clone stamp tool and then I just stamp down um, textures from other parts of the bed. And that tends to work pretty good as long as I'm not grabbing things with lines in them. OK. 
Okay, so that works pretty good. I'm just gonna go back over my line work again one more time. Oops, make sure I'm in the black. Ah. Yeah. I'm a little, little on the weaker side today. Okay. And then right here, this is kind of messy, so I'm gonna kind of try to blend that a little bit better. Very thick, uh, hard lines there. That looks a little bit better. Okay, so now I'm gonna save that again. I'm gonna look that at that in Moho. So this should update, should. I'm gonna go ahead and delete the, uh, let's see, this one. This should be the background. Let's make sure I s that is saved. So sometimes what happens is the link doesn't update right away. Sometimes you kind of need to either flip through it or flicker it. Let's see if it's connected to the right thing here. Open source image. Yeah, see it's, op it's connected to the right image. So what I'll do is I'll just go ahead and I will save this iteration and I'm going to close it and then we'll open it back up. Mike says, if Smith Micro were to update Moho 13 as an experienced animator, what would you like to see? Uh, so for Moho 13, like the tools and everything that they want to have in that release are there. Unfortunately, it was just kind of a not very stable release in terms of the bitmap tools. When I first initially started using it, it was awesome. But the more that you kind of use it and you do more advanced things, you can kind of see where the hiccups are. Um, so I, from what I hear, it sounds like they, from different people that are in the beta group um, that have commented in the Moho animator, or I think it was the Lost Marble forum. Uh, they said that it sounds like they're still working on it. So um, my guess is, is with everything that's going on right now, uh, Smith Micro's main focus has always been the mobile side. They have their mobile software and things like that. So I think that's kind of been the focus. And then once things kind of go back to normal, uh, there'll be a more of a focus on Moho itself, which will be nice. Um, so Let's yeah. Slip from the covers without a single peep. So now you can see that it's updated. It's a little rough. I'll, again, I'll have to go back in and just fix that. But for right now, it, it's good because now we don't have... Wait for Bunny to Izzy to help her sister sleep. Okay, so I got something going on right there in her hair. I don't know if that's the layer. Oh, it is the layer. So that is her layer. So what I need to do is I need to make sure... So I'm going to open up her layer, which is uh, Izzy. And I have this little background layer here. That's weird. I wonder why that's uh, cutting out weird there. Um, hmm, hair. Okay, that's that head, hair. Ah, gotcha, okay, okay. So she has a body that I kind of need to create. So I'm gonna go to my brush and I'm just gonna make a little bit bigger. Just kind of bring a body shape around kind of that way. And just fill it in really quick here. I'm gonna create a layer underneath so I can fill this in a little bit faster, whoops. What is that part of? Yeah. Okay, and then I'm gonna do my best to use the stamp tool to grab the um, different textures and stuff. Whoops. Oh, I'm using the wrong layer. Keep on doing that. My thing's not working. Oh, I'm, on, I'm not on the right layer, okay. Um, let's see, let's go ahead and let's merge these two layers that I just created. Let's try this again.
So again, I'm just creating uh, something so that her hair is not transparent. Okay, I think that might be enough. Uh, did I make that mistake? Looks like I did. Fix that. Okay. All right, so we'll save that. Go back to her file and this should clear up this little transparency issue thing that was going on there when her head moves. Yep, see, so now we got her body and then I got this weird little line there. I'm not sure if that's one that I just created. Oh, <laughs> it was. So it's really cool. You can see that it's Moho, after I saved the Photoshop file, Moho updated, updates it automatically, which is really cool. Um, okay. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna play this out again. So she slipped from the covers without a single peep and gave her bunny to Izzy to help her sister sleep. Thank you, Elise, Isabella tearfully said. The two sisters hugged before Elise went back to bed. Okay, cool. And hopefully that's not too loud with the uh, desktop audio. Thank you, Elise, Isabella tearfully Or uh, loud enough, I guess. Um, Okay, so now we're done with the Photoshop side of things. Yay. Sorry, I should have done that before the stream. I forgot that there's that one extra part. Um, so now we can get into the animation, the best part. So again, I'm gonna play the, play through this one more time to kind of get an understanding where everything's at again. So she slipped from the covers without a single peep and gave her buddy to Izzy to help her sister sleep. Thank you, Elise. Isabel okay, so okay I don't know what this bunny where this bunny is coming from so this looks like it's part of Izzy and okay okay hmm so she slipped from the covers without a single peep so for those of you who are wondering if uh, you're passing one thing to another, uh, Moho 12, I believe, came out the feature where you can unparent and parent to a new bone rig, but I haven't had too much luck with that. So this is just a layer. Uh, this is the rabbit layer in one group rig and then that same rabbit layer in another group rig. So I just switched the visibility on and off. Um, and with this type of stop motion type of so animation, covers, it's really easy to do. And gave her buddy to Izzy to help her sister sleep. Thank you, Elise, Isabella tearfully said. The two okay, so now what I just need to do is just pick my spot where, okay, everything's solid. Give her buddy to Izzy. And then start from there. So I'm going to create my starting point at 78 here. Gave her buddy to Izzy to help her sister sleep. Thank you, Elise. Make her buddy to Izzy to help her sister sleep. Thank you, to help her sister sleep. Thank you, Elise. Okay, so you can see the layer is a little off. Thank you, Elise. Okay, so right there. So there's uh, that rabbit. Um, so at 157, there's a rabbit here. Let's see, Izzy. That's turning on a little too soon uh, because her hand's right there and now her hand's behind that hand. So I'm gonna turn the other rabbit back on and I'm gonna push it into that position. And then I'm going to hide that other rabbit for now. Oops, Izzy. Let's see what. Oh, duh! I have to do this. So I'm gonna wait till her sister pulls back away. So right here, and then that's when I'll make this rabbit visible. So looks like on 81 there. I can make that visible. 81, 83, okay. Okay, and then uh, for those two rabbits, so I have, 
go this one. What did we say? 183. Whoops. Okay, bear with me. I got to figure out what I. I was working on this pretty late last night, and so I don't remember what I was doing. Thank you. Okay, I see. Um, I'm thinking to make this just easier, I'm going to put the character Elise above Izzy for now. No, hmm. Uh, I'm trying to think here. Okay. Thank you. Because you can see now that the rabbit is not in her arms properly. And I can't think very clearly right now. So I think. Okay, so Izzy has that rabbit. Turn this one back on. So eventually I'm gonna use reference layers, but I don't wanna use it yet. I'm going to just use what I can at the moment. Okay, so I'm gonna do, right now, I'm just gonna delete this rabbit from Elise's character, because that's really confusing me now. I just wanna stick with this main, oops, dang it, wrong rabbit. Yeah, so the one on Elise I want to keep, the one under Izzy I want to delete. I just want to get rid of that for a moment here. Thank you. Okay, so what I'm going to do then is I'm going to have her pull back a lot sooner. So she hands the rabbit, and then I'm going to pull this. I'm going to do a control F to freeze all my poses there. Okay. And then as you can see there, it's attached to this arm. Nope, this arm right here. So as she pulls back, <laughs> broke both her arms. Uh, so as she pulls back, the rabbit also pulls back. So this is where I need the visibility of this rabbit to go away. So, oops, make it not visible there. Ah, oh, man, I don't know why I'm struggling with this. Okay, so I think for the most part that's okay. Okay, so this is a whole layer visibility thing. It's a little, a little, uh, I wouldn't say advanced, but definitely complex at the moment because I need to figure out, oh no. Now I gotta figure out where the, oh, the visibility on this one is still, needs to be visible. Okay. Thank you. So this rabbit, I wonder if it's still attached to her arm. No, it's not, okay. Because it's outside of the rig. But it does not need to be visible till the handoff. So, oh, what the heck? Okay, there we go. So I need to have 
Oh, why is it doing that? What the heck? All right, so the rabbit, the other rabbit should be invisible until a certain point. And the handoff. So right about there. So this is where I'll have this rabbit in its identical position there. I think that's identical. Let's toggle it. Uh, barely. Uh, that's close enough. Okay. Whoa. That's uh that shouldn't be there. So fifty six we'll delete that. Ah see this isn't really animation, this is complexity of freaking working with visibility layers. Not very fun. Okay, because okay, somehow I still have to, so I think this is where I just need to do a reference layer at this point um, for her upper arm. So I'm going to grab Izzy, or actually Elise. I'm going to create a reference layer. And then for right now, I'm just going to hide everything but that upper arm. So in this pass off now, I'm gonna put that above the layer. Oops, make sure I do it right. So I'm gonna put Elise above Izzy. So now her arm is gonna be in front of that rabbit. Goes back down. Okay, so now the next thing that I want to do is I want to tuck the rabbit under her back arm, uh, her back arm, and I'm gonna listen to my dialogue to figure out where to do that. Thank you, Elise. Isabella tearfully said. The two sisters hugged. Okay, so now they hug. Isabella tearfully said. So I want her to hand it off. So now it's kind of a timing thing that I'm trying to figure out here. Thank you, Elise. Isabella tearfully. Whoa, 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 whoa. And gave her bunny to Izzy to help her sister sleep. Thank you, Elise. Isabella tearfully said. Yeah, so it's not going to quite match the dialogue because tearfully said, I, I'm i not doing any lip syncing or anything like that. So I think I'll just delay the action. So it. I think that's what I was trying to do last night when I was doing this. So right about here, I'm just going to create a thing and I'm just going to put tuck rabbit under arm. So I'm just going to create a marker uh, for that action. Um, da -da 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 -da. Mike says, have you always used computer aided software for animation or hand drawn or what inspired you to animate? Mine was the snowman by Raymond Briggs and show here in UK on channel four at Christmas. Cool. Um, yeah, for me, it was um, it was Moho, actually. Uh, my dad had got me Anime Studio 9, I think it was. Or no, it was 7, because he bought it off of Amazon. And kind of has a long story behind it. But it was, uh, it was Anime Studio 9.5 that I bought for myself, where I actually got serious, sat down during uh, summer break at college, and was like, all right, I'm gonna learn this. And so animation, I learned animation in Moho. And uh, I asked this question the other day to the group, the Facebook group of what's something you would tell someone that like a piece of advice that you give someone who's starting in Moho. Um, and let's go ahead and let's hide uh, Elise for a moment here. So I can just focus on Izzy. And uh, my piece of advice that I, I had suggested was, 
Um, <laughs> sorry, bear with, bear with me just a second here. I'm trying to uh, animate this part here. Okay, so that's where the keyframe goes. Okay, so my piece of advice was don't uh, rely on Moho to do all the animation for you. Because that was one of the mistakes that I had made. What's going on with their arm? That was one of the mistakes that I had made when I first started um, using Moho was uh, smooth layer interp interpolation. I relied on it way too much. Okay, so uh, sorry, bear with me. I gotta figure this out. Um, so again, I wanna make it look like she's tucking her arm so I'm gonna add another frame in there, just kind of bring her arm down with the rabbit. Okay, and then, uh, let's see, I don't know what to do for her. So she's using the bed as her support. She reaches up grabs the rabbit. Oh man, I don't know how to make it look like. So if I was doing that motion, if I had my hand out and I was doing that motion, I'm trying to think of what parts of the body would move other than the head like slightly, but yeesh, I don't know. Very, it's a very limited rig that I created, whoops. Maybe a squash a little bit maybe, we'll see. It's probably way too much. Ah, uh, no. Oh wow, that bone is very sensitive. Okay, I'll show that again. Yeah, that works, okay. So I'll keep that squash, or that kind of crunch in motion there. Whoops, 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 whoops. Hold on, so it goes there. Oh, it's extending, what the heck? Okay. So what I can do for this is I'm gonna select this bone and then hit Control I to select all the other bones and then copy those other bones there. Oops, okay. That looks bad. Sorry, bear with me. So 145, I'm gonna put this on 157. Ah, uh, dang it. What am I doing? I'm doing this wrong, sorry. 181. So she hands, let's bring back the other layer because I'm losing track again. So she hands her sister the rabbit. Oh, shoot. Okay, so. Let's fix that then. Let's fix the visibility on the other rabbit. So, uh, here, yeah. Oh, why is the rabbit moving? What the heck? Shoot. Oh, man, yeah. Uh, so if I would have done these rigs differently, I definitely know now what I would have done. So let's, so now I just need to match the layer. That's my fault. So I need to match it to, where does our arm move? Here, so 181, jeez. And then they go in for the hug. <laughs> and she's like, eh, sister, come back. Just kidding. Um, so yeah, I gotta fix that. And she's like, hey, wait, give me a hug. And then we'll fix her arms. Um, so the hug. 
And the hug was something I was working on yesterday before I created the reference layer. So that's kind of why there's animation already on that pose right there. But um, so I just need to fix. Oops, that's Elise. Ah, I keep on animating the wrong layers. OK, so I need to create a pose before they break away of right here. And then uh, OK, so this is where she's going to have both her arms down. I don't know what happened to this arm. I got to grab those bones again, I guess. Fix that. There. Whoops. What the heck? Tuck the rabbit. There we go. So she's hugging with one arm. And then it goes down. And then what I'll try to do with the character, I don't know how well this is going to work, but I'm going to put her back into her original position. Oops, not with the arms. Uh, maybe it's the starting position then. Because I kind of had her like in bed. I just noticed my auto free keys weren't on. That's why I was having a couple issues there. Okay. All right. And then the I'll fix the spacing on the sister as she walks away because there's quite a big gap there. Okay, cool. Um, oh wow, a lot of, a lot going on there. Uh, let me catch up here. Abdullah says delivering something to another person is one of the hardest things to animate in my hover. Yes, it is, and this is kind of my fault too. I didn't really prepare for the handoff on this rig. Um, so what I would have done for those of you who are watching is, I would have just like I did with uh, the Elise rig. I would have had a rabbit attached to her hand, and then I would have had a rabbit attached to her hand. So both of them would have a rabbit touched, attached to their back hand. That way, when they move their arm, the layer obviously moves with it rather than animating the layer separately. <clears throat> I don't recommend doing that. Um, I tried to do the parent bone. I created, I created the rabbit itself as its own rig, and then tried to use that feature in Moho 12, I think, where it gives it to one parent and then to another parent. So it just reparents the bone, but I really couldn't get it to work. It kept on flipping all over the place and not working right. So I probably just didn't know what I was doing there. I've never used that feature. Um, so yeah, that's kind of uh, some of the issues that I've been running into and, and what I would have done differently. So let's go ahead and let's play this back. I'm gonna play it back with the audio and I'm gonna watch it a few times because I'm gonna start taking notes, mental notes of what to start fixing. So we'll play it back. And there's no audio. Everybody to Izzy. So we'll try that again. So she slipped from the covers without a single peep and gave her buddings to Izzy to help her sister sleep. Thank you, Elise, Isabella tearfully said. The two sisters hugged before Elise went back. To okay, bed. so I can see that the rabbit so she slipped from the covers uh, visibility is still messed up. And gave her buddings to Izzy to help her sister sleep. Thank you, Elise. So there's a rabbit there and a rabbit there, and then it said. fades the two out. sisters hugged before Elise went back to bed. So she slipped from the covers without a single peep and gave her buddings to Izzy to help her sister sleep. Thank you, Elise, Isabella tearfully said. The two sisters hugged before Elise went back to bed. So she slipped from the covers. Okay, there's a still quite a bit of animation that needs to be done to on to help the little sleep. girl. Thank you, Elise, Izzy, Isabella tearfully said. The two sisters hugged before Elise went back to bed. Okay, and then the when she turns around, she turns around way too far. Um, so we'll do it kind of a little bit in place, turn around. Okay, so real quick, I'm gonna catch up on the comments again. Um, Daniel says, I haven't touched Anime Studio in a very long time. Well, cool. Animation is very expensive, elbow would move, fingers grip the rabbit. Uh, what's going on with the fingers? Let's see. I may be missing something. 
actually was student. Thank you, Elise. Yeah, let's do that. So I'm going to move the hand. I'm not going to worry about hand rigs. I did that in a previous uh, page, that I animated page, and it's just a lot more work. I'm trying to turn this out a little bit quick, uh, as quick as I can, because this takes a lot of time to do all this. I still have like 20 more pages. So, and I'm doing this all as just kind of a portfolio building type of thing. So I'm gonna just move her hand, whoops, I animated the wrong layer. F frame, rather. So I might need to fix that Thank a little you, bit. Elise. Isabella tearfully said. The two sisters hugged. So yeah, I'm trying to think of, I want it to look like she's reaching out and then she's tucking it. But that doesn't work right there. So let's do this. Let's have her hands poke out just a tiny bit. Oh shoot, nah, wrong hand. <laughs> Thank you, Elise. Let's see if we can. I I might have to change the timing a little bit on this pose, but I'm just gonna have her follow her arm down, and then reach back up once she has it tucked in place. So again, I might have to fix the timing on this, but then we'll do. I'll do eyes closed for this character, because um, I, I did one for this one, so I'll do a blink for her. So it kind of looks like she's looking down. And then I'll have her look back up at her sister and then reach out for a hug. Whoops, not like that. So something like that, maybe. So thank you, Elise. Isabella tearfully said, the two tears tearfully said, Okay, I'm gonna add another pose before she looks up. So I'm gonna turn on my onion skins. I'm gonna turn off my background. And um, have her look up. And then. Something right about there so that there's another pose in there. Isabella tearfully said, the two sisters hugged. Before okay. All right, so um, now what I need to do is I need to fix the spacing. Maybe, hmm, maybe there's enough time to read that she's going in for, she wants a hug. Thank you, Elise, Isabella tearfully said. The two sisters hugged before. No, that doesn't work. Let's see. Thank you, Elise. Okay, so she gives her the rabbit. And so I'm gonna move these down. See, so now you can see that the rabbit character is out of line there. So I'm going to turn on, um, what is it? The layer, this little check mark right here, lets me see on my timeline. Uh, it should anyway. Oh, I need to turn both of them on. So I have that check check mark on and this one, so I can see both of them. Because now I got to match the layer up to the original. So you can see there, there's a layer for Izzy and there's a layer for Rabbit Two. Thank you, Elise. Isabella tearfully said. The two sisters hugged before. Okay. I think that works. Isabella tearfully said. Uh, the arm raise is a little bit fast. It's faster than any of the timing that I have right now on this animation. That was in the wrong spot. Fix that keyframe. So one, two, three, four, five, six. Nope, it's on sixes. Or Isabella tearfully two, said. Six, yeah, fives. Isabella tearfully said. The two sisters hugged. 
the two so you can see she's kind of moving up with her whole body I don't want that I'm gonna keep her head in the same spot so I'm gonna select the head fix the rotation Isabella tearfully said the two sisters hugged before the two sisters and then when the other sister goes in for a hug here, I'll lower her arm to where it needs to be here. Whoops. Uh, where is it at actually? The two, the two, the here. That's what your said. The two sisters hug. Whoops. Actually, I don't know what I'm doing there. That's the two, two. not what I meant to do. Do I need to go two twenty three? We said the two sisters hugged before we said the two sisters hugged. I think I messed my timing up. Before Elise went back to bed. I did. Shoot. So I'm gonna grab these other layers where her head tilts down. As tearfully said, the two sisters hugged before Elise went back. Okay, there's a lot going on with this girl right now with all her animation. So let's play this back. So I'm just gonna watch this back a couple times and then As continue. Isabella tearfully said, the two sisters hugged before Elise went back to bed. Isabella tearfully said, the two sisters hugged before Elise uh, went back. I messed up the timing. How did I do that? Two sisters. I messed up my poses somehow. Isabella tearfully said, the two sisters hugged before Elise went back to bed. Ah, Isabella tearfully gosh. said, the two sisters hugged. Isabella tearfully said, the two sisters hugged before Elise went back to bed. The two, the two sisters, the two sisters, the two sisters. So her arm, I'm not gonna have it that outstretched because it's I'm doing way too many poses. Isabella tearfully said, "The two sisters hugged before Elise went back to bed." The two sisters. Probably. Lengthen this part out just a tiny bit. Just do a little bit of movement on her arm there. Isabella tearfully said, the two sisters hugged before Elise went back to bed. Isabella tearfully said. Okay. Under there. Isabella tearfully said, the two sisters hugged before Elise went back. To okay, bed. so now there's some movement on the Isabella character. Isabella tearfully said, the two, 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 the, the two sisters hugged. Okay, so there's a bone scale somewhere on there happening. Right there. So I'm going to delete that. The two sisters hugged before Elise went back to bed. Isabella tearfully said, the two sisters hugged before Elise went back to bed. Okay, and then that's where I'll have her eyes closed there. Isabella tearfully said, the two sisters hugged before Elise went back to bed. Okay, so now I'm gonna look at it all again one more time. Look at everything without bones. Cause that, I tend to get a little distracted by the bones, so we'll see how it looks without them. So she slipped from the covers without a single peep and gave her bunny to Izzy to help her sister sleep. Thank you, Elise, Isabella tearfully said. The two sisters hugged before Elise went back to bed. Okay. So she slipped from the covers without a single peep. All right. Um, Cartoon Animator is good software. Daniel. Da, da, da. Uh, bear with me. Just going through the comments here. Okay, okay. So it looks like Mike and Daniel, you guys are talking. Cool, cool. Um. 
Hey, Madi Gliani photographer. Okay, cool. Just uh, going through the comments there. Uh, I don't speak Portuguese, but it kind of looks similar to Spanish. Queria aprender muito a animar no mojo. I don't know what muito. I know, uh, wait, no, muito is like muito boom. I've seen that. Like, very good. I don't know. I don't know Portuguese. I know Spanish, though. Very similar, but I would like to learn how to animate, not moho. I don't know. I think that's what that's saying. Okay, so, um, yeah. So now the only thing that I can see in this that looks a little off is... The visibility of the existing rabbit to the old one. So I'm just going to pull up uh, that rabbit and I'm going to remove her thing there. Ah, there we go. Yep, that tells me exactly why. Wait a second. Oh, actually, what is that? Do I have another rabbit? What the heck? Rabbit. Oh, I do. <laughs> De. Okay. Oh, whoa, what? Oh, it's because it's, uh. Okay. I'm trying to remember what the symbol means. I think that means that it's the target. So this is the original. Shoot, that's what I should have been animating is the original. There we go. That should fix that. Yep, it did. Okay, cool. Nope, it's still there. Oh, it's because I didn't lap it overlap it properly. There we go. Okay, cool, cool, cool. So hands are in the right spots. She brings it in, tucks it in, goes back. And then I'll just move the rabbit out on this last frame here. Um, don't know which rabbit it is. There we go. It's this one. Uh, right? No? Yeah, it's that guy. So she goes down to lay down. And I'm going to move her arm over the rabbit. Where is her? Oh, I got to turn the buttons on. Okay, and then I just got to make sure that her arm, uh, let's see what's going on. So this is where they're pulling away. Oh, that's why I... Not looking at my keyframes here. Fix those. Whoa. Uh, what time is it? How long have I been doing this? Oh, an hour. Okay, so I gotta hop off here pretty soon. Um, have a few errands to run today.
Okay, I think that's good for now. It's still kind of rough, um, but I think it's pretty much there. Without a single piece. Whoops, shoot, what is this? So she slipped from, who are you? Why are you? Oh, what the heck? I messed up my visibility. Oh, what? I did mess up my visibility. You should not be there, little rabbit. So she slipped from the covers without a single peep and gave her bunny to Izzy to help her sister sleep. Thank you, Elise, Isabella tearfully said. The two sisters hugged before Elise went back to bed. So she slipped from okay. the covers. Okay, and then the last thing I'll do is I'll just fix the spacing on Elise and then we'll call that good. Oh, I think my house is gonna crash on me. Hopefully not. Nope, it's not, good. All right, let's save it before it does. Um, Abdul says it'd be very helpful if the separate layers are uh, automated and don't have separate panel for them just to be highlighted when mouse approach them. Uh, Abdullah, are you talking about alt right click? You can select layers by alt right clicking, like quick, uh, quick select. I don't know if that helps but it's the same as Photoshop. Armin, yes, this is Moto, Moho. Um, Maglani says, I'm passionate about this program and really want to learn more about it. Do you have video lessons for beginners? Uh, yeah, like Kane says, I actually have my website. It's it's right there on the, the, I'm pointing at my screen, but it's right there on the, screen there, store.mccoybuck.com. Um, yeah, that's where you can find all of the stuff that I teach. And then of course I have my YouTube channel with, uh, if you check the playlist, there's playlists on animation, on rigging, all sorts of stuff. Um, thanks Mike, thanks for joining man, really appreciate it. And then Armin asks how much time have I spent on it? Uh, with this one in particular, this one's been about two days. So a total of, I don't know, six hours. No, not even. Probably like five hours, four to five hours. Um, this one's a little bit more tricky. I've done help her sister sleep. Thank you, Elise. About five pages so far. Six pages. Two sisters hugged before Elise went back to bed. So this one's just a little bit harder than my other ones, but. Still fun. Okay, cool. So then just this little flip here. Uh, let's see what. Oh, so I still have a rabbit layer somewhere highlighted. There we go. Uncheck that. And then I'll just bring that closer. So actually, you know what? We'll undo that. What is that using? Huh. Okay, so I'm actually gonna just keyframe that. Um, so what's really cool about layers is if you're doing a layer translation is you can copy all of your, or you can take all your layers and move them all at once using the relative keyframing option. So with that selected, with all the, the keyframes highlighted, I just right click and drag. Please went back to bed. Her buddy to Izzy to help her sister hugged before Elise went back to bed. So she slipped from the cover. Okay, so I think Elise went back to, bed, back to bed. You can still see it's a little bit far away, so I can still scoot that closer. Uh, before Elise went back to bed. Back there we go. Bed. And that's pretty good there. All right, so that's pretty much it, you guys. Um, I hope this these live streams help. I don't know how helpful they actually are, because when it's the Photoshop stuff and when it's the technical stuff of doing moho and it's not really much animation um it gets a little so tricky from the covers but a hopefully it helps nonetheless to help her sister sleep 
Just turn that off. Oh, that last pose was a little weird. Her arm is a little off there. I'm just gonna fix that really quick. So it's 261. Yeah. Okay, that's pretty much it. Um, if you have any questions, feel free to leave them on the video, even after the video is done, or I think you can keep on commenting for a certain amount of time. But yeah, I'll go back through those. If you have any questions about the video itself, uh, if you want to learn more about Moho, again, be sure to check out my website, store.mccoybuck.com. Um, but yeah, that's pretty much it. I appreciate everyone for watching, for your comments and your feedback. And yeah, I will see you guys later.